Hello, my name is Bolu Watiwi Ayo or Kwaliki. I live in Lagos, Nigeria. Someone said to me one time, she said that life is impartial. And you know what? I believe her because no matter who we are, our religious affiliations, our status, our age, where we live, our demography, whatever it is, life often gives us all a cocktail of the good, the bad, and the ugly. Now, I am not an exception to that. I've had my share of all three. Okay? I remember the year was 1990. I was in GS2. I went to a boarding school, a federal government college, and in that school we barely had water. Okay, we used to have tankers bring water to the school about three, four times a week. Sometimes it was as bad as maybe twice a week. That meant that you had to be ingenious, you know, or innovative about how you would store your water because whatever it is you forgot to fetch was had to last you till the next time that it came, you know, to deliver water to us. And so that day, that fateful day, I just had lunch. You know, I was boarding, I went to boarding school, so I was a boarder. We just had lunch and I was about exiting from dining hall and then I heard the senior call me. Oh my goodness, I almost peed on my pants because I literally was afraid of seniors. I was in church and I was kind of like tiny and I really didn't want their wahala. You know, so this senior calls me and then gives me a stack of dirty plates. Seven, eight plates they're about of dirty breakable plates, glass plates to wash for her. Now, she didn't give me water, I wasn't giving soap. That meant that I had to use my water and my soap. Remember that I said that? I went to a school where water was a big deal. So that meant that what I was supposed to take my bath, I had to use it for this senior's plates. Anyway, I washed the plates and then I'm about to go deliver the plates to her. I'm so close to her hostel. I'm so close to her hostel. And then I trip. I fall. And all the plates on the ground shattered. Now, I wasn't sure what part scared me the most. The fact that I was injured and I, I didn't feel any pain. Or the fact that I just had, I, I just broken plates belonging to a senior. Anyway, I must have done the energy I had in me and not the courage. And I went to this senior's place with my, you know, of course, I'd been crying already. I'm like, I, I just broke the plates that you gave me to wash. I'd finished washing them. I don't know what happened. I, I didn't know what I was. A stone. I just fell and she just hit me. And in my school, seniors were not allowed to hit juniors. We were not allowed to, to hit juniors. I think she remembered that in a hurry. And then she just, you know, told me to kneel down. And she was going to say punishment. She was going to give me grass to cut. She was fuming. She was upset. She was angry. Her friends didn't make it any better because they all came around her shouting and insulting me. And oh my goodness, I had all manners of insults hauled at me that day. Someone said to me, she's just one odd, weird, smally. Why are you wasting your time? It allowed her to go. You know, and then in the space of about maybe two hours after, you know, um, kneeling down in the sun, she says to me, just get out of here, you this odd human being. And then I left. You know, I was just happy that I did not stay, spend more than two hours being punished. I got to my room, I thought everything was fine. But after a while, I think it hit me. It just occurred to me that she was not the first person to use those words odd and weird and bizarre on me. And I was like, what is it about me? I thought I was doing just quite fine. You know, I didn't think that I was different from anybody else. You know, so it kind of like disturbed me. And I had a, I had a, um, a routine okay so i'd write to my dad yes in those days we used to write physical letters like you take your pen or your pencil to paper and then you write stuff down yeah so i, I wrote a letter to my parents specifically to my dad actually you know telling him about how my day had gone and how this senior said i was old and i was weird and i was bizarre and all of the insults she held at me i articulated them in my letter and i sent them to him now at the time the postal service would take about two weeks for the letter to get from on those states agree on those states to lagos Okay, and then another two weeks for it to get back to me. So there's a give or take. I had to wait for a response in a month, you know. And in the month, my response came. And it was my daddy. You know, he sent me a letter. And it's very unlike my dad to write a lengthy letter. To, to, to write a lengthy letter. But this was kind of like wordy, which, like I said, very unlike him. So I was like, okay, perhaps I, he must have been upset also at the fact that his daughter was so far away and she seemed to be very unhappy. Because the words in that letter were, oh my God, there were many. But you know what? The interesting thing is this. I do not remember every single word in that letter, where it was, but some aspects of it stand out for me. Stood out for me then, still stand out for me today, more than, let's say, 28 years after. So almost three decades after, I said, I still refer to that. And my father said to me, what they call odd, I call extraordinary. And what they call weird, I call unique. <laughs> that was it. That was it. Since that time... I realized that, you know what, it was okay to be different. People did not have to understand my kind of different. It was okay to be unique. It was okay to be me. And so whenever people said those things to me, rather than get me angry, kind of like fueled whatever, you know, um, confidence that I had in me. And so as a parent today, anytime I look at my kids, I, I, I want to say the best things to them. Not to psych them or to make them overly, you know, important or anything. No, I want to live with them words, basically, 
I want to live with them memories that will last them for their lifetime. So that even after I'm gone past, even after I'm gone off this earth, little parts of me will be with them forever. So that's my story. Thank you so much for listening. I hope that you have been inspired by the story to be you, to be different, to be unique. Okay? God bless you.